I've asked myself the question, like, is Amazon dumb? But when it comes to the selling experience as an Amazon seller, they don't give a shit about us. <laughs> like, they don't care at all. Obviously, it was like a giant middle finger to me. They haven't done anything to help sellers more. I wasn't the only one affected. I just happened to be the industry leader, so. How you got this My Amazon guy thing going? I have been a reporter, I've been a marketer, I've been an educator, and today I highly focus on trying to drive behavior. Now I run an HR company called My Amazon Guy, this 548 person agency. It's been a journey of new skills. I learned how to, to build a brand on Amazon. I learned how to build an agency. I learned how to start a sales outbound process for the first time. A couple of years ago, we grossed more than $20 million as an agency. We helped manage over $800 million on the Amazon platform. You know, I play video games and just like life, life is a video game. And if you don't go to that next level, it just, it doesn't feel right. right? Every single day, it's got to be something smaller, bigger, better, even if it's an incremental game. And my whole goal is to accelerate prosperity to everything around me. How important really is branding on Amazon and how do you build a strong brand? What was the last item you bought on Amazon? <laughs> it's screw a mini screwdriver set. So, so, so screwdriver. What was the name of the brand? I don't know. Exactly. Amazon killed brands. And every time I've ever asked this question, question, nobody can answer what the item that, that they last bought. And the point is, is that to have a strong brand on Amazon doesn't necessarily mean people remember your brand. They might remember the experience, but they don't remember your brand. Because of that, a lot of the things that you might have read in a business book over time or, or heard somebody on stage talking about how important branding is, it's a totally different thing today. I launched a soap brand on Amazon called Age of Sage. Now, this is after one of my, my kids. This is my daughter. She's five. You can see the avatar is basically just like her. It's made after her. And I'd already tried you know, to, to launch a hot sauce, and that was a failure because when I shipped it in the Amazon and I paid Amazon to do the prep work. So they put the bubble wrap around it. They they slap on the F and stew and then they shipped it out in pet of them. And I started getting oh, texts no. from my brother and my family and everybody that was buying it on launch day. And there was hot sauce shards. I've asked myself the question, like, is Amazon dumb, right? Does Jeff Bezos not know how to set up a system? <laughs> and clearly he does because he wouldn't be the billionaire he wasn't today. If that wasn't the case, Amazon Prime and logistics and all the FBA facilities, they speak for themselves. But when it comes to the selling experience as an Amazon seller, they don't give a shit about us. <laughs> like, they don't care at all. Like, they haven't done anything to help sellers. On Black Friday, Friday last year, Amazon took down all of my tumblers. They delisted you? Delisted the entire subcategory, right? So parody tumblers does not exist on Amazon anymore. I wasn't the only one affected. I just happened to be the industry leader. So obviously it was like a giant middle finger to me, right? I lost a quarter million dollars on that problem. And I want to be very clear. I think Amazon is worth doing, but the reason why I talk about these challenges is because it's not passive income. Bottom line is, yes, I have a brand. I have Age of Sage and I, I put it on the logo and it looks cool, but no, Nobody goes on Amazon and says, I want to buy Age of Sage. Now, a thousand people a month do, to be clear, but that's not generating most of my income, right? Most of my income is being generated off of non-brand keywords like artisan soap or soap for men. And those are the keywords that drive the business. Is the brand then the experience the customer gets when they buy your product with the hopes that they continue to buy it? Maybe, because I think a lot of times you associate the experience to Amazon and that's the brand, right? So like Amazon has usurped our direct correlation, our direct relationship with the consumer. Your focal points as a business owner, as a brand owner on Amazon have to align or shift with that understanding. So instead of trying to hyper focus on brand and, and all of that, instead you need to focus on optimization and, and how your main image looks, right? Some people start throwing yellow flags immediately when I bring this up. They're like, terms of service, your listing is going to get suspended. I've never had a listing suspended for a main image. I've had an image suppression, which you can clear in about five to 10 minutes. But the things that I advocate for, which will increase your CTR. And if you want to know like my number one hack, the number one way to grow sales fastest on Amazon, with the least amount of effort without a question. It's the 
main image. If you add a keyword to the main image, you are going to increase your CTR, your click-through rate. If you increase your click-through rate, you're going to increase your traffic. If you increase your traffic, you're going to increase your sales. And by the way, CTR is also directly correlated to conversion rates, which throws people off usually. But if people are more likely to click on your product, they're more likely to buy it too. So adding a keyword to the main image, making sure that you showcase all of the ingredients. If you sell a supplement, show me the pills. If you have packaging or really nice packaged goods, make sure you show the package next to the item and the item itself. You don't want to just show one or the other. You got to show both. If you got an accessory, you got like a plug. If you're selling electronic, show the accessory. If you have eight different color variations, you might want to put that in the side or the bottom of your image like Zule Kitchen does to, to showcase all of that as well. Instead of branding, you need to go focus on metrics, CTR, traffic conversion, without a doubt, those are your power three metrics. Explain the keyword with the main image. What, what There's an actual text in that main image? So this is a very visual demonstration. So this is a very well-known brand. We've got hundreds of thousands of reviews. So if you look at 219,000 reviews, they have a, a bestseller. All of the things that we talked about are present in their main image. This is a very busy main image. They have milk frother with stamp as their keyword. They don't make it as front and center as large as I typically advocate. This is probably the weakest thing in the main image, but they do everything else very, very well. They've got the red bow, which makes it look giftable. That one's a little bit over the top. I'd say, you know, if we're going to talk gray or black or whatever, that's getting closer to the dark gray. And then, but you can still get away with it. And then showing all the variations and the colors, showcasing what you can do with it. So it's a milk brother. It makes this nice little coffee cup and it shows even the spinning action. So what it does to the milk. Uh, it has every one of these elements. When somebody looks at this, they know exactly what they're getting. The fact that they have a little starburst here to show that it comes in 80 colors. They do all of that. That's the main image. Okay. When you scroll here, that is a very powerful main image. So I'll, I'll go back to the search page, right? When we scroll through here, you see four ads followed by Zule Kitchen showing up in organic slot number one. We see Milk Splash, we see Coffee Beans, we see the device in all of these competitor images. But Zule Kitchen has organic slots one, three, four. That might even be, no, there's number two, unless that's like Peachtree Store literally copied everything Zule Yeah, Kitchen. right. I, I mean, what a ripoff. Holy cow. Yeah, like literally to a T. There might be some copyright there. But if you look at like Bonsai Kitchen or whatever, all they show us is the, the item and that's it, right? And it's probably the same quality. It's probably made by the same Chinese manufacturer. But which one are you going to click on? You're going to click on Zule Kitchen over here on the left, or you're going to click on Bonzen Kitchen on the right. It's a no brainer which right. one you're going right. to click on. Right. This Zule Kitchen sells 20,000 of them. Bonzen sells 4,000, right? And the only thing that Bonzen can do to outcompete Zule Kitchen is win on price. Today, you're going to lose on price tomorrow. There's just no question. But just to showcase like some of the easy keyword additions that you could do. So I've got some of these examples at myamazon.com slash IMG if anybody wants to look at it. But the smudge sticks here, take a commodity item on the left. Now it's branded on the right. And we showcase the keyword with smudge sticks. Those are the keywords that you're saying. It's an image of keywords. Well, I mean, yes, this doesn't ship in that box. That box doesn't have that keyword on it. It's all Photoshop, right? right? right. Consumers never complain about that, by the way. When we look on the left here, we have a cooking baking sheet. But on the right here, we're now selling grandma's baking. When you see this, you immediately smell chocolate chip cookies mm -hmm. from the kitchen that grandma made when you visited, right? Which of these two invokes a memory? Which of these two invokes your senses, your smell sense that you didn't even think about, right? So your eye triggers the nose. On the left, it's like, oh, it's another drawer of junk. Right on the right, it's oh my gosh, I want some of those cookies. You can Photoshop on a little sticker here. It looks like it's on the product. By the way, once you do this and you prove it works on your product, what should you do? You should go to your manufacturer and add this to the item. Yeah, yeah. But to prove the concept, Photoshop is sufficient to get you up, off and running. And to any of the pedantic followers that are like TOS and the comments and the haters I'm going to get, my answer to you is this if you just do what the customer is looking for, if you help customers, TOS won't matter. People don't get in trouble for this. Amazon doesn't enforce it. And I'll, and I'll prove it today. On the left, we have a yellow journal. And if I asked you, Adam, you know, why would you buy this item? And you only had the information on the left, you'd be like, because it's yellow. 
The same question on the right, though. Why would you buy the journal on the right, Adam? Well, I mean, I see the content and I see this kid's word really big and I want to get stuff for my kids. And the age is huge. I mean, I'm always looking for age age ranges for the things I buy my kids. So this is a really well done. I, I love that you could see the output. So this was one of my friends over in the UK that sells the Happy Me Journal. I did this image for free for him and it tripled his sales in seven days. He didn't That's even awesome. have A-plus content up. His secondary images were were that great. I don't even know how much ads he was spending at the time. All we did was switch the main image from the left to the right right here, and it made a 3x sales difference. When we talk about click-through rates, it converts at major dividends. It pays out really, really big. So this is the future of branding on Amazon, and it's about click-through rate control. By the way, this is all trackable in your search query performance report. And you can see what your CTR is on every individual keyword. And whatever keyword is showing at the top of your SQP, your brand analytics, that is most likely a good candidate to add to the main image product packaging. What we can see here is that they're doing everything we just talked about with the keyword. Odor Eliminator, smack dab on the packaging right here, gigantic. Can you even find the brand name? No. You can, but it's difficult. It's even, you know, one fourth the size, one third the size here at the very top there. And you can see Angry <laughs> Orange when we zoom in. All Thrasio did when they bought this brand was two things. One, they watered down the product to make a higher margin. And two, they changed the packaging to make it with a giant keyword. And that 7X the sales in less than a year. Everybody is doing this. Everybody needs to know about how to improve their sales. We type in Colgate, for example, and we scroll down, we'll see a brown box right there, pack of four, right? By the way, that doesn't come with the brown box that says pack of four on it when you buy that yeah. Colgate. And theirs is a little bit more egregious. They don't do it on every single product, six months of ink included. And they just put it on the printed page, right? This doesn't come with a purple piece of paper that says six months of ink. Included. That's amazing walkthrough. And thanks for that. I do think that there's plenty of people out there going to say, no, no, no. They said, you just have to have the image, no words, no this, no that. And you're doing it and it's working, man. That's great advice for everybody. So thank you for that. Yeah. Anybody that's listening to this, if you go to the best sellers list in your subcategory, unless you're selling something that sells less than 20, the best seller has got less than $20,000 in monthly sales. They may not be adhering to, to the best practices we just advocated for. But anybody that's in a big category, you're going to see the best seller doing these things. It's just going to happen. And so you got to nail that main image. I got it. What about the other images? How important are they? Because you do see people that they don't have brand registry. They don't have A plus content. They have one or two images in the gallery. But I mean, what happens when you start doing it right and adding more? Does it really help or not? It's a massive difference. Like if you look at the conversion, Conversion rate before and after an optimized page, it can be anywhere from 2x to 5x improvements right now. Amazon, by and large, has made the default conversion rate on Amazon somewhere between 8 and 10%, right? Just for showing up. Now, when you optimize the listing, you can get it up to you know 15% or 20%, and that can make a very big difference. Now, a listing with one or two images is no way it's going to be an 8% conversion. It's probably going to be more like three or four percentage points, uh, unless it's like a big big box retail store product that's in every mall and every 13 year old teenager is buying this lip gloss, for example. I've seen I've seen some really bad beauty product pages in my day, but those are typically driven by omni-channel while somebody's at the store, they're buying it in the store because they can get it off Amazon for 50 cents cheaper or, or whatever. I think that the secondary image stack, the A plus content, the brand story will pay major dividends. But if you can't get the main image right, start there first and, and spend 10 hours on the main image. Spend a couple hours on the secondary images. Maybe you need to get an infographic. Maybe you need to have somebody using your product, looking directly at the camera with eye contact, right? Maybe there's things that you need to do and, and all kinds of ways or mechanisms you can improve the image stack, whether it's lifestyle images, infographics, informational text images, you comparing against your competitor product, why they should buy your product. Maybe you have a high return rate that you see in the customer comments. You need to sell into some object objections in the secondary image stack. It's a great place to do that. Here's my framework though. And I, and I love to take all of the theory and boil everything down to a simple framework because then it becomes so easy for you to advocate and teach the people around you and, and make sure your virtual assistants are following all the things you talk about. Text is for robots, images is for people. And when you understand this, that means 
you can go run the runway with as much SEO keyword stuffing as you'd like in the text. Why? Because that's for robots. But the images, you need to be hyper-focused on. You need to run A-B tests. You need to be understanding what the consumer is looking for. And you need to have everything built into those images to affect the consumer, to make them want to buy your product. If you sell a pet product and don't show me dogs, you're crazy, right? Like you're just, you're just crazy. If you sell a baby product and don't put babies in 80% of your image stack, you're bonkers crazy because that is what drives consumers. If you don't have a customer avatar and nobody knows what you sell or who you are, that's a problem. People need to understand what you do, who, what you sell and who you are. Customer avatars, image stacks, those are what drive consumers to understand what your product is, what it does, and if, if, if it's right for them. You know, have you been doing a lot of A-B testing or the PicFu stuff? Yeah, tons of it. You know, we use a lot of, of PicFu and A-B testing on that. I think there's a lot of, of good abilities to understand how you're doing versus a competitor. So if you've never run an A-B test before, the very first easiest A-B test for you to run, just take your product and, and do it against your number one competitor. If you're not sure who your number one competitor is, put your product in against six of them and, and just see what consumers say because it will prompt some interesting thoughts. And then my second favorite A-B test is to change one element of the main image and make an addition or a subtraction and, and run an A-B test like that to see see kind of a meaningful difference. So that Happy Me journal that I showed you, that won 98 to 2. So you actually A-B tested that one. You didn't just... Oh, yeah. I wanted to prove the case. I wanted to make sure that they actually used the main image when I built it for them. Because sometimes when you give gold to somebody that doesn't know what gold is, they're like, eh, it's a shiny object. I'll put it in my copper pile. You have to use a, a, an A-B test sometimes to persuade people. Sometimes even when you give data to somebody, it's still not persuasive. And that, that is like the epitome of the human mind, right? Like psychology 101. How do you persuade people? When I was in college, I was in, on the college debate circuit. I, I, I was on scholarship. I beat Harvard at a national tournament one time. But I, I'm here to tell you that, you know, even though I could go AFNEG on any topic, you could pick any issue right now on Amazon. I'll, AFNEG, I'll argue the topic. No problem. Would love it. Would probably win that debate. I'll tell you one other thing that's way more important. It didn't persuade anybody. You know, like the people that heard me debate, I didn't persuade a single person. So what's the freaking point of winning the debate? I love using data to try and persuade people, but sometimes data is not enough. Sometimes you have to figure out what persuades the individual. And so there's a lot of psychology behind that. We could tie that into how you persuade somebody to click on your image. You could tie that into how to you know, persuade your team to take behavioral action. But since I'm now a CEO of over 500 employees, me trying to figure out how to persuade people other than just cracking my whip or throwing money at the problem has been a lifelong mission that I've tried to overcome in the last five or six years. Yeah, I mean, but if you show them that their sales are going, how could they not buy in, even if it's data, but it's money? I don't want to cheat the system. And if my product's so good, people will buy it despite oh, the image. No. You know, you'll, hear, you'll hear all kinds of hubris, all kinds of pedantics. I've seen it all, man. Like the gauntlet that pops up. What's your approach to advertising and PPC and all this on Amazon, off Amazon? What are your thoughts on this? Pretty big topic, but. With advertising, I have a couple of frameworks that I like to use. Always be advertising. That's the easiest one, right? That's like a default one. Anybody Anybody that does ads is going to understand that comment very deeply. But I think the sub point of always be advertising is sometimes lost. Always advertise every single product. And some people are choosing not to advertise some products. Maybe they don't advertise every SKU. Maybe they don't advertise every color variation or, or whatever it might be. Or maybe they got a weak seller and the ads have a higher A cost. But I have found time and time again that if let's say I take on a new account and there's a thousand SKUs and today they only advertise 17 of them. The fastest way to grow that account would be to create an auto catch-all PPC campaign, put a five cent bid and make a dedicated ad group to every single SKU. So a thousand SKU, thousand ad groups, one campaign. And I, I'm here to tell you that that can generate thousands of dollars at ridiculous 20 to one ROAS sometimes, 5% ACOS. My next one is never negate a good keyword. You can hear all kinds of PPC experts, gurus, they all make this mistake. They're like, oh, you set up an auto campaign and then you promote it over to exact match. Well, the problem with that is that the auto campaign will often, more often than not, 
have a lower A cost than an exact match campaign. You by and large, by promoting a good keyword from auto and you negate it off auto and put it in exact for some reason, you are throwing away five, 10 percentage points of A cost. People still today make that mistake. So I, I like to use the mantra, never negate a good keyword. Leave it in the leave, auto. Leave it in the auto. What, never turn something off that is working under any condition. There's no reason to do that. It's okay to have the same keyword in multiple campaigns. There's no cannibalization risks by having those multiple touch points at multiple different bids. If you want to get really sophisticated, just to go the most advanced strategy, you might have three campaigns or with different bidding strategies, or even you can do this at the ad group level too, technically, but let's say three campaigns, each of them had a different budget and each of them had a different bid. And maybe you want to have like the ability to never turn off ads, but you want to have a lower bid after a certain budget threshold. That, that would be a strategic reason why you don't want to have the same keyword in multiple campaigns. So never negate a good keyword but on the other hand run negations weekly still flabbergasted sometimes when i i see other ppc campaign structures and they don't add negations to broad match or auto campaigns and i'm like i don't i don't get it why are you wasting money like i firmly believe that you should have one keyword target for every two negations now to get to that, it sometimes takes like a year to get to that threshold. So if you're listening to this and you, you're advertising on a thousand keywords, you only negated 57, right? Yeah. Like let's say your A cost today is 50% and you only have 37 negations. If you add another thousand negations, I bet you your A cost will get down to 35% because you'll negate all the things that don't meet your threshold. Now that might cripple your growth. Let's be clear. If that was important to you, if margin and getting the A cost down was important to you, that would be the easiest way to do it other than lowering bids, which could also help. I believe believe that auto and broad match campaigns are super underrated. I personally, on my own account, put 80% of my sponsored product campaign budgets in auto and broad match campaign. And every time I mention this, it usually throws people off. You're like, that's absurd. That, that, that's that got to be a waste. I'm here to tell you I get better results on broad and auto than I do on exact. Now, exact are super important. Exact can be very crucial for SEO purposes. Exact can be very important for defensive purposes and, and even offensive in some cases. But broad match and auto campaigns just simply have a lower bid. So I want my dollar to go farther. You don't have to put a very high bid. Sometimes you can get away with, you know, 30 or 40% of the bid of the other competitors and you'll still win the rotation just because it's more topical, more relevant of a product. Product, uh, compared to the competitors. You know, that's not going to grow your brand per se. But it's going to prevent your competitors from stealing some of your customers. And so it's a defensive play. Most people gain customers today through non-branded keywords. That's where most of your effort and time needs to be spent. But I'll even run defensive ASIN campaigns. Look at a, a detailed page. There's lots of, there's like a, you know, I counted them up one time. There were 997 ads, clickable ads on my own detail page. That's a lot of ads, right? Yeah. Like too many DM ads, period, first of all. And second of all, like on my own website, I only have one ad my product. But on Amazon, there's rabbit holes everywhere, isn't there? Sometimes it makes sense to advertise on your own detail page to prevent that. Or at least even if they don't click on the defensive ads, they see your at your product class or everywhere. It just reinforces how important your brand is and they're making the right decision. We had Epson and they make a bunch of different products, but it's a, it's a, it's a popular name in the categories they play. They have a receipt printer and they're like the number one receipt printer. And it's like more of a B2B product. It's point of sale, but it's very popular. And I was trying to, first of all, they would just a mess because they have no Amazon strategy. But I was trying to show them if you type in Epson receipt printer, there may be a page beyond the first page. Like they're the they're the brand, and there's brands you never heard of, like you mentioned before, all going to school on their brand. And it's because people are looking for Epson in that case because it's a it's kind of a standard in in, in the industry. I do think you need to do some defense. I'm glad you agree. It makes me feel a little I bit do. better. And what about the off Amazon stuff? Is that happening for you? You doing Google and all that and pushing it back to Amazon, or is that a the problem that I typically find, though, is that sponsored products will have a better return on ad spend on the average category product by as much as five to eight times better. It makes it difficult to want to go off of Amazon to advertise. I'd usually recommend this after a certain threshold, after your $2 million brand, after you see diminishing returns, because going from, let's say your A cost today is 35%, and you're thinking about Google ads. I'm telling you right now, there's no way Google ads is gonna beat a 35% A cost, especially since you can't track it, you can't optimize it, it's all a guessing game. Because of that, until your A cost you know, is tapped out at 50%, let's say like 50% is like, oh my gosh, I can't go a percentage point over that. At that point, what I 
try Google ad. TikTok influencers and UGC content, totally different framework for that. Highly recommend it. When I started doing UGC on TikTok for Age of Sage, I tripled my brand searches on the Amazon platform. I got a lot of great engagement, pennies on the dollar for, for clicks and all that good stuff. I am a fan of running ads on, on as many platforms as possible if you have an omni-channel brand. But to be clear, Facebook, Google, and, and all of these different platforms right now, it's, it's just incredibly difficult to optimize and to track results into Amazon. And there's obviously tools that do this and some of them do them pretty well. It's just not as good of a return and it's harder to track, harder to manage. So that's why I usually say you gotta be at a certain threshold before you tap into external traffic strategies. What, what were you doing with, did you have influences or you just were running advertising? I paid uh, roughly about $150 of video. We'd get somebody to make a 60 to 300 second video. One time I had a barista shoot a Tumblr video inside a Starbucks with my Starbucks Yoda parody cup, which was incredible. Like you, I couldn't have paid somebody a thousand dollars to go out and do that if I tried, right? Like just got lucky on the UGC selection. Those videos will get thousands of plays on TikTok and just incredible results. And it's very low cost. It's not gonna work in every category to be clear. If you're selling a B2B product, TikTok is definitely not gonna help you. But we're seeing a lot of people that are, you know, we're in this TikTok nation right now where we're looking, everybody's looking down at their phone and their products. And there, there's just some leverage to be had here. Do they click through TikTok to Amazon or they have to do something else? They do. So TikTok shop is making a surge right now. And there's TikTok is trying to shut down traffic going to Amazon. They see themselves as competitors. Amazon is so threatened by TikTok that they created their own Timu Lite program at Amazon. I don't even know what Amazon's yeah, yeah. calling it. I'm not going to use it because I don't, I don't, I don't want to shop from the Chinese directly and, you know, wait two weeks for an item, especially since it's subsidized by both the U S and the Chinese government. You can, you yep. can mail something from China to the United States and Oklahoma city cheaper than you could from don't, Atlanta. Don't get, Atlanta. don't get me going, man. I know the, the system is corrupt. And this is, you could say this about almost every new sector. You can even say this about electric cars. Subsidies are, are ruining the free market. So Amazon paying attention to this, they're so scared of the Chinese a la Timu and TikTok that they turn their last enemy, Shopify, into their best friend. Right now, Shopify and Amazon are linked up. Facebook and Amazon are linked up. Pinterest and Amazon are linked up. So we're seeing a lot of uh, changes in behavior. Your enemy of, of my enemy is my friend, I guess, or something like that. If I was a brand looking for, you know, the two or three action items to go chase today, I would defend main image to hell and back. And I would talk about, you know, the customer avatar and getting all these elements right on Amazon. But let's assume for a moment that my Amazon page is perfect. And my diminishing returns on sponsored brands, I've, I've hit my threshold and I've already hired consultants and I've hired agencies and I, and I just, I'm plateau. At that point, I would say, go do TikTok shop, go spend money on Google ads, go do these other crazy external traffic things because you'll find some growth there. There's no question. New customers await. But make sure you're dialed on Amazon first. Make sure you got your, your no stuff question. together there. The, the ROI is just so much better on Amazon just significantly, but that's why I chose my name, my Amazon guy. Like, you know, when I was in the laundry room with my wife talking about what we should call the company and whatever, and she's like, well, how do people normally introduce you? And I'm like, they never introduced me by Stephen Pope. They don't care who I am or what my name is. They just say, talk to my Amazon guy. He will help you on Amazon. And so that's how I made the company name. And, and I think that there's just a really big impact that Amazon is. It's half the economy, realistically. Amazon is the behemoth. It's the 800 pound gorilla. So if you're not on Amazon, you're irrelevant. First of all, Nike is even coming back to Amazon after a beating. Like they drunk the company because they left Amazon. Like that's how powerful Amazon is. You know, it's scary. I like the outcome, but they got to be watching. Yes. I think Amazon is a monopoly. I think competition at Amazon would be good for you. It'd be good for me and it'd be good for the customer. But I'm just praying that it's not the Chinese. I just, yeah. I just don't want it to be Timu or TikTok. I wish it was the Canadians in Shopify. That's not going to happen though. The only so, way you can take out Amazon is to build 400 FBA centers equivalent. Ain't going to happen. And w Walmart's not doing it either. I mean, we, we so do have starting on Walmart. Like they bought jet and they yep. couldn't integrate with their, their point of system. Like, I, it just said, what is the stupidest acquisition of the last 10 years? I would say it's Jet. 
But I mean, we, we, tr we try to do Walmart from time to time with certain products and you put in a lot of effort and you just don't get the, the I'm sure people do well on it. It times. just, it, it just doesn't work. 10 times the amount of effort for one tenth of return. Yeah. It, the math just doesn't add up. And, and I'll, I'll let you in on the secret. Here's why. Walmart is not a marketplace. When I say that people like get a little eyebrow raised sometimes, but like, seriously, Walmart's not a marketplace. Why? Because they cheat. They put the retail products above your product. You'll never, ever hear about a native born Walmart brand. But 95% of the brands that I work with, I have 400 brands that pay me every single month right now. Only 5% of them are omni-channel. 95% of them were born, started on, on Amazon. Is it too late if you're not on Amazon already to get on Amazon? No, it's what? harder but it's not too late. Like the, Amazon is the greatest wealth transfer in my lifetime. I am a multimillionaire because of Amazon. If I had the money that I had today and I could go back 10 years ago and invest it, I would dump it into Amazon, no question. Even today though, we're seeing the ability to launch a new product and make millions of dollars. Right? It's very possible. Now, a lot of people do it the wrong way. There's probably thousands of sellers that are, are going to try and fail uh, because the gold rush does not reward effort. It rewards results. Right? If you go out and buy a plot of land in, in them hills back in the gold rush day in California, you might have had a chance of success, but not a guaranteed one. So just like selling on Amazon, it's, it's a legitimate business. You have to put in massive amounts of effort. Usually you need three things to run a business finance, marketing, and operations. And you have to have an A in one of those three and at least a C or better in the other two. And most often than not, the, the, the brands that I work with, they're usually really good at the manufacturing or operations piece and not so good at either finance or marketing. And so if that describes you, you'd be obviously a great candidate to work with a marketing agency like MAG. Yeah, I mean, for, for us, it's kind of still a heavy lift to start somebody up where we kind of focus more on brands that have some run rate on Amazon or they're selling to Amazon, they hate selling to Amazon, Amazon's destroying their brand and they're squeezing them for profit. Jack and blah, blah, blah. is my best friend and I love everything he does. <laughs> Seller support is amazing. It, it never lets me down. If anybody wants to connect personally with me, I am very hyperactive on social media. My two channels are YouTube and LinkedIn. If you leave me a, a comment or DM me, I will personally respond to you. I just really have a big passion for what I do. And I, I want to bring, I want to level up the whole Amazon community. That's why I do what I do. That's why I share all my trade secrets. I want to bring prosperity to the entire world.